Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Coming up in today's show, we'll share roadworthy information along with creative ideas on how to enhance your backyard garden using plastic bottles. Did you know they can be used to make a house? Yup, how? Well, you don't want to miss a minute as the answer to that question is coming up shortly. Stay tuned as the magazine unfolds. Keep we island clean, so clean. From the peaks to the beach, so clean. Not a tea of Jamaica, please don't do it. Keep we island clean, so clean. From the peaks to the beach, so clean. Not a tea of Jamaica, please don't do it. No dash, no paper, no dash, no plastic. Dispose your garbage responsibly. No know how to recycle, learn it quick. And if you drop it, better pick up every piece of it. Plastics last forever, don't forget the bits. Cause when them touch the street, them end up in at the sea. Collect pan the reef where they fish them feed. And when you want seafood, I eat your eat. Keep it island clean, so clean. From the peaks to the beach, so clean. Now the tea of Jamaica, please don't do it. Not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica. Recycling is the name of the game and one school has joined in. The students and teachers at the Richmond Park Primary are reusing plastic bottles to allow for agricultural developments at their school. Check out their plastic bottle, Greenhouse. <laughs> Recycling, the process by which used materials are converted into new, usable products. One of those commonly recycled materials is the plastic bottle. It's often used to produce a number of products, from clothing to furniture and even other bottles. But did you know that bottles can be repurposed into a greenhouse? Well, a team from the Richmond Park Primary School in Clarendon not only built a greenhouse, but also created an irrigation system along the way. The JCCP and the UNDP um, involved us into a project in ways how we can sustain the environment. So our school, we came up with the idea of recycling plastic bottles. And because we are in the farming, our school is in the 4-H club, we decided to do the greenhouse and plant crops inside of it. We use plastic bottles a lot in our schools and our surroundings and we see them all over the place so we and the students we came together with an idea to collect all the plastic bottles in our communities and then we bring them back to our school and then we wash them and then we started to build a greenhouse. This size it took us one week, exactly one week. Inside we have six types of drip irrigation system. We have the cone dripper, where we put the plant inside of, we cut the, the liter bottle and put the, the plant inside of it. And the water is absorbed by the absorbent cord into the, the soil that, is, that the, the plant can get um, the water and the nutrients also. And we have the hose dripper, when the water um, runs off the roof and catches into the bucket, it leads to the hose and it waters the plant also. And we have the plant hangers and the syrup bottle um, self-watering system where the water drips from one bottle to the next until it water all the plants. So you don't have to go every day to water plants. The bottles are there, it's a self-watering system. All you have to do is to pour some water inside the bottles. The greenhouse was a hit at the 66th staging of the Denby Agricultural Show in Clarendon and caught the attention of several government ministers one of whom was Minister Without Portfolio in the Agriculture Ministry, J.C. Hutchinson, who indicated that this project was in line with something he had been advocating for. What I've been speaking mainly about is the hydroponics, which part of what you see there is the hydroponics where you have the water coming through the plastic bottles to filter to the plants. And also you could have aquaponics also where you have the fish below and that filters through the plants, through the plastic bottles, and comes back out. Inside there is cooler than outside here. And I think if we can 
have some of these going, it might suit quite a number of persons who might think of setting up house. Reduce, reuse, recycle. The use of plastic bottles in the agricultural sector is definitely becoming a thing. So give it a try. Start a backyard garden and help to rid the country of these pollutants. We all can play our part in helping to make the country a cleaner place and even help to boost the economy. On our roads, remember, take time, be courteous, drive good, walk good. Part of keeping our roads safe is ensuring the vehicles we drive are mechanically safe, meeting all roadworthy requirements. And besides that, we must be good drivers and avoid risk-taking and sensation-seeking behaviors which are prone to causing road crashes. Red, amber, and green. The colors of the traffic lights which help to regulate traffic along our roadways. Ever wondered what technology is used to change the signals? Find out more in this next feature. A uh, traffic signal, as we refer to, to it as, it's a, a system of electronic controls that we use to assist in managing traffic at particular locations along our corridors. In managing the, 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 the flow, there is a system. We have mast arms. We have the signal heads. Signal heads are what you see, the lights, whether green, amber, or red. Um, we have wires that are connected to a control box. The control box has a number of components that assist us in managing the flows through the intersection or junction. Now, before we actually signalize an intersection or junction, we do traffic counts. So we know where it is the bulk of the vehicles are coming from or they're heading to. You want to have that information so that in setting the timings, in reversing the timings for persons to go through, you know what amount of green time you're going to be giving to a particular phase of the intersection as opposed to another. Our traffic signals, the systems are on a fiber optic uh, network that is actually right across the country. So we have a combination of fiber and microwave links that we're using to roll out what we call a public safety network. And the systems that we have, we have been um, incorporating our camera systems with these. And so we're able to monitor traffic through our traffic management center that we have at the corporate office 140 Maxfield Avenue. And it gives us the ability to change the timings that we have at these locations remotely. In other words, we don't have to have our officers physically go into the location, uh, changing the timings. In the traffic management center, we have something called QuickNet. So in present day right now, this is what we use to remotely manage all traffic lights. What you're seeing on the screen now is a virtual display of what is in the cabinet at the intersection via our traffic camera. At the first display, you can see it. this is our Model 170 controller. This is what we use as a standard in Kingston. So right now you can see all the visual displays. This is what exactly you see in a ca traffic cabinet. Beside it, you see a graphical representation of what is happening at the stoplight. So at the cameras, you can see two true movements and a turning movement, moving from green to amber to red. And now you can see the two turning movements start. So you can see two turning movements and a left turning movement happening right now, as well as a forward turning movement at the next part of the intersection. So the graphic can show you the plan 
the status, the cycle length, offset values, traffic statistics. So using this, you can see if the stoplight is working efficiently or not. So this will tell us if the stoplight is down, off, in any problem or whatever. So before people have to call and report a stoplight is down, with this system, when everything is integrated, you won't have to. You automatically know. What you're seeing now on the screen is a viewing of half a tree area, the Kingston Metropolitan area, where we can now monitor traffic remotely. So before, to put up a traffic light, somebody would have to go months prior and record the traffic data to put up a signal. Now we can have somebody here remotely counting traffic as well as several different other specialized cameras to count the traffic for us. So specifically, we can look at specific intersections, say for this one example. If we see the traffic is building up, we can allot more time to a specific intersection to allow the true traffic to flow. We have well over 100 uh, locations across the country uh, where we have signals and the number continues to grow because uh, every year we look at new locations to signalize. Uh, the demand is, is, is quite high and the demand grows with the numbers of vehicles that we are seeing on our roads. Are you aware of your rights if it is that your vehicle is seized by the police? Do you know that there are situations in which they are not allowed to do so? If not, get the facts from the upcoming feature. And I'll tell you first about the, the reasons when the police should not seize the vehicles because they don't have the lawful authority to do so. If you don't have a driver's license in your possession, the police should not seize the vehicle. They can prosecute you under the Road Traffic Act. Now there's a difference between not having a driver's license and not having, a, and, and not having your driver's license in your possession. If a person was never issued with a driver's license, that person clearly should not be driving. A motor vehicle. What the police will do in those circumstances is that for one the person will be prosecuted if they find out that the owner of the vehicle allowed the individual without a driver's license to use the vehicle that person the owner can be prosecuted as well. Otherwise the police will take possession of the motor vehicle because they will not allow a continuation of the offense. They will take possession of the motor vehicle and will get someone who has a driver's license or the owner to come and claim that vehicle. We don't seize a motor vehicle for no insurance coverage. The person will be prosecuted, but they will, it is not a seizable offense. No registration of fitness is not a seizable offense. The police can lawfully seize your vehicle if you don't, if the vehicle is not licensed. There is a provision in law that is referred to as the month of grace. So one month after your registration expire, if you are within that one month period, the police should not seize the vehicle. Your vehicle can be seized lawfully if you don't have a regis registration plate affixed. So you're driving around with, with no registration plate, it can be seized. Or if the registration plate is so obscure that you can't see what's on it, your vehicle can be seized under the Road Traffic Act. There are other acts that the police can lawfully seize your motor vehicle. For instance, if you are operating in uh, contravention with the provisions of your license that was issued to you, you, you can, your vehicle can be seized under the Road Traffic Act as well. Also, under the Dangerous Drug Act, Section 24 of that act, allow the police to seize vehicle if the vehicle is suspected to be used in 
commission of those coffins. Also, on, the, on, a, on a broader sense, is that if the police have reason and evidence that your vehicle was involved in a criminal activity, then the vehicle can be seized and the owners can be held accountable, even if they were not the ones that were driving the vehicle at the time. So those are the circumstances when your vehicle can be lawfully seized by the police. There are other provisions when you can have your vehicle towed. If you park in areas that are designated no parking, if you park your motor vehicles that are too close to fire hydrants, then the, your vehicles can be towed and in instances where your vehicles are seized, the vehicle should not be returned to you until the provisions of the law is satisfied. So if your vehicle was seized for not, for, 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 for not being registered or licensed, it will not be returned to you until you go and get your vehicle licensed and you pay the appropriate and prescribed fines, then your vehicle will be released to you. So it's important for persons to know when your vehicle can be lawfully seized as opposed to when it cannot be lawfully seized. Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF, celebrating over 20 years of investment in community development. JSIF has forged relationships with international funding partners, as well as private and public sector entities. Let us continue to invest to reduce vulnerabilities. Let us build our social capital and resilient infrastructures to ensure full participation in Vision 2030. JSIF, investing for community development. We are the first in the region to be in possession of a vehicle of this magnitude. For several years now, this has become a regular affair. The local government minister and the Japanese ambassador rubbing shoulders, testing new equipment and vehicles commissioned to the fire brigade. The cheerful and gleeful affair, a manifestation of several meetings and collaboration with one end goal. The Jamaica Fire Brigade, as the first responder, must be in a position to respond when the needs arise. I'd like to reiterate that the government of Japan is very pleased that this latest endeavor will have far-reaching social and economic benefits for the people and the government of Jamaica. The relationship is decades old, since the Japanese government established bilateral relations with the island back in the 1960s. The Jamaica Fire Brigade is one entity that has benefited from the bilateral partnership. Since 2016, more than $10 million worth of command vehicles, ambulances, fire trucks, equipment and other safety resources have been acquired for the local brigade. And this kind of vehicle will place the Jamaica Fire Brigade in a much better position to be able to coordinate with the Jamaica Defence Force, the police, the Ministry of Health and other agencies. The donations have benefited fire stations in and outside of the corporate area. The servicemen and women of St. Elizabeth, Manchester and Westmoreland have in recent years gotten well-needed resources. It is for several reasons the support from the Japanese government is appreciated. The fire brigade does more than extinguish fires. They assist the sick in cases of motor vehicle collisions, times of natural disasters and public education on safety and security. Without assistance from the Japanese, the government would have to fund these expensive upgrades to the brigade with tax dollars. The collaboration with the Asian country has also provided for the restoration of fire hydrants. More than 900 were repaired, with over $13 million in grant funding from the government of Japan. It's the first step towards repairing more than 4,000 hydrants across Jamaica that have been marked for repair and servicing. Local firefighters have also traveled to Japan for fire prevention training. 
The now Caribbean Maritime University has also been gifted with three refurbished fire trucks and an ambulance to support its training programs. It has allowed the university to improve emergency response to the people of the vulnerable communities of Port Royal and Harborview in East Kingston. Our general expectation regarding the use of the three fire trucks and ambulance uh, that over time there should be a decrease in the numbers of disaster related losses, the saving of precious lives and mitigating the loss of properties of Jamaican people and business establishments. We have to teach our people how to work together and this is what these emergency vehicles will do. The relationship between the Japanese government and the people of Jamaica goes beyond words. It is a gesture of good faith. The Japanese and Jamaican governments partnering for an effective and responsive firefighting service. Yourself, man. I'm a certified, licensed, and ready for the pest control work. Mount make me say anything, you know. That is why I travel with my documents PCA ID, insurance, pest control operator's license, applicator certificate, with picture and everything. Sign, stamp, seal, and up to date. So, when them expire? See it here on the document. All pest control personnel and companies have to be approved by the Pesticides Control Authority. For a list of licensed companies, contact the Pesticides Control Authority at 754-9306. The European Union has been doing their part in enhancing the lives of Jamaicans, but as the saying goes, I can show you better than I can tell you. So, take a look. Hi, Mas Errol. How you do? Not too bad. This is what's so interesting in the paper to the Mass Herald. Enough, enough things. Did you know that the EU has been doing a lot of work in Jamaica? Who is the EU again, Mass Herald? The European Union. A group of European nations that come together to promote social and economic progress and peace across the world. Is it true? Newspapers are well and good, but I bet I can find more information from the internet. I know just the person to call. Hi, Minister. Minister. Hi, Jody. Hi, Errol. What can you tell us about how the European Union has been helping Jamaica? Over the past 43 years, we have received approximately 1.2 billion euros, and this has run the gamut of a number of developmental programs. A particular area of support has been in the area of agriculture. The EU has provided grant funding and support funding for sugar-dependent areas. Between 2006 and 2017, the EU provided some 23 billion Jamaican dollars to help people living in areas that are dependent on sugar. Under the AMS, 397 houses have been built for residents. This replaces the old barracks type housing in which they used to live. The condition of the barracks were completely rough. No light. No water. We never have any transport. The bathroom is outside and the toilet or a pit toilet. We never have no tank, we have a tank. The lights are here, the bathroom inside, the kitchen inside. Thank God for the benefit we have right now. Nearly 200 miles of roads have been built or reconstructed in the parishes of St. Catherine. St. Thomas, Trelawney, St. James, Hanover, St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, and Clarendon. Based on the roads that we did, it has created some farm of ease for the truckers. Citizens of the area, they also benefit from the road. More than 2,000 SDA residents have received vocational training. The centre would have been equipped to the tune of over 7 million Jamaican dollars to purchase various forms of training supplies and equipment across three skill areas, apiculture, bartending, and cosmetology. I have been receiving training in various areas, such as facial, massage, nail. They have helped me to be certified, and I can now earn an honest living from this. 
the EU provided over 100 million Jamaican dollars in new business grants to residents in sugar-dependent areas. Thanks to the EU for giving me this injection of a thousand chicken, the feed and medication. I received one million dollar and it makes me into a woman that I am today. The EU's AMS program has also funded extensive improvement to health facilities. We expand the waiting area, operational space for our doctors and nurses. The staff morale, it has improved because you're better able to work with more privacy. With the funding, we're able to open this section we call the male ward. It is marked improvement over what it was. I feel comfortable, I feel like at home. Enhancement of educational facilities. We have a system that's in erecting an auditorium. We have a fully refurbished computer lab. And we have a library with over 300 books. We got $11 million to build the facility. And it was a wonderful restroom for the school and we appreciate it. Upgrade of child care facilities. The funds were used to retile the bathrooms. We improved the plumbing area on the dorms, extended the kitchen and the dining room. Conservation of the environment. We embarked on a project here in Salt River, the Portland by Discovery Center. Funding has gone towards the erection of the building as well as the construction of the boardwalk. Increased access to sporting facilities and the preservation of Jamaica's historical architecture. We were fortunate to get funding for the rehabilitation of the building with computers and computer workstations. The EU-Jamaica relationship has strengthened considerably in recent years. Our contribution focused on building resilience, improving quality of life of people in the communities and providing alternatives. I am absolutely confident uh, that the strong and uh, uh, very constructive relationship that we have today based on trust, based on partnership, will continue. You see how the European Union partner with us? You're right, Mas Errol. Life sweet of a true with the EU. <laughs> <laughs>